So I made a four part, I believe, breakdown of uh, Mystery Babylon. It was a bit of a series. Uh, it was from the writings of my teacher, Dr. Robert Luganbill, ichthus.com, I-C-H-T-H-Y-S.com. Probably haven't heard that in a while if you've been following my videos. It's a really awesome site, guys. I know it's a lot of reading. It's, um, it's a college level reading course, essentially, and it's just thousands upon thousands of pages, but he is the most consistent teacher I've ever even heard of aside from the Bible, of course. And that doesn't mean that I put him second to the Bible. There were prophets and they were, you know, apostles for a good reason. That being said, in our time, there's very few that actually have a hold on the whole whim and wit of the actual word in total like he does. So if, if you guys want to spend some incredible time growing, that's very difficult. Um, it's difficult because it's going to bash a lot of your preconceived notions but I still, after all this time, can advise another source of information to learn from um, more deeply than I can that site, ichthys.com. That being said, this series that I wrote about uh, goes into depth about all the biblical information. A lot of the stuff that I'm gonna go over here today, I'm gonna make this more of a nutshell video because the closer we get to the end, the more and more misinformation and disinformation we see being um, posted and proffered on all sorts of internet sites and um, Christian, uh, Christian with air quotes, um, periodicals and whatnot, because um, the church today suffers from some really, really severe misinformation, disinformation, whether you see that as active, actively misforming people, misinforming people, or um, passively basically just accepting what they've heard because that's what they want and then just you know, shoveling it along, passing it along. Both of those things are horrible. They are unnecessary, unreasonable, and it's essentially the darkness that the Lord was telling us was all about us and that the word is the only thing that leads us through. So regarding Mystery Babylon, it's a place. It's an absolute place. We're, we've been told, you've likely heard, perhaps it's the Roman Catholic Church or it's, it's, it's computers or it's, you know, the, the medical system or it's po politics. It's all, no. It, it is an actual place. Repeatedly, in fact, throughout Scripture, it is always described as a place. And it doesn't necessarily, at any given particular point in time, point exclusively to one specific place except for Mystery Babylon and the original Exilic Babylon. Meaning, obviously, there was a place called Babylon where the Jews were taken for 70 years and punished for their, you know, repeated uh, spiritual adultery from the Lord. You know, the... the the tribes of Judah and Benjamin essentially were drug off, but those that had, were the, the faithful remnant, uh, where Daniel was a part of and whatnot, they were all brought into the original Babylon. Um, but we see a bunch of different verses that seem to apply to a different Babylon. And then again, in Revelation, we see mystery Babylon, you know, this gaudy, scarlet clad prostitute, as it's called, um, given a very, very specific place in the end time scheme that is not only unmistakable, but if we were to misapply what the Bible actually says about who and what Mystery Babylon actually is, we're led to all sorts of these false notions that I'm sure, again, you guys have heard about repeatedly. But the truth of the matter is, there is more scripture pointing to it being an actual place, an actual city type state, you know, a, a, a super nation, if you will, uh, an economic powerhouse, um, uh, an idol central, than any anything else. Like it, it, in my opinion, the if you take even a a good percentage of the actual evidence in Scripture, there's honestly, I think, if you're being honest, no way to unsee that Mystery Babylon has to be a nation. Not only is it a nation. But, and I'll put the four part series in the notes here so that you guys can go back and study for yourself. But there is actually much scriptural proofs that Babylon, Mystery Babylon, is where Antichrist comes from. It is his springboard to power over the revived Roman Empire, the kingdom of the north, as it's called in the uh, book of Daniel, uh, or the, the fourth beast of Daniel, or the beast that comes out of the sea that is also synonymous with the beast. Um, yeah, as, as having, you know, existed. So he, he existed beforehand, he gets killed, but then comes back rising up out of the sea as if straight from the layer of hell itself. Um, 
so it very much is it's it's riding the beast so it's it's taking advantage of all of the uh the power and the structure and the popularity and whatnot of the beast all while not really doing anything um, to earn it and then eventually earning the ire of the beast to such a degree that it's actually destroyed uh, in fact one of the biggest pieces of biblical evidence that point to it being a place is the fact that in jeremiah 51 and by the way jeremiah was written before the uh, babylonian exile he was he was one right along with isaiah that was warning that the babylonians were coming your exile is planned your punishment is guaranteed um, but in 51 it goes out of his way to say you know flee from babylon and refrain uh from from it from, from from her judgment in other words don't be a part of the things that are about to uh happen to her but if we look back into the post-exilic history of israel we see in ezra and nehemiah very succinctly that their return was in two waves it was orderly and it was after a very um societally uh it was, it was backed by the people essentially of babylon they were they were given wares they were given tools they were given gold and silver and, and all of these things including lumber and whatnot were used to rebuild the temple at the time so jeremiah goes out of his way to say you know i'm gonna fling the doors open hear my words run basically um, but then we see that when they returned it was orderly there was no running and that it was literally uh written into law by cyrus that the jews were to return to their land and get get all of their um their their previous possessions back so we know for certain that those scriptures were never technically fully fulfilled. I'm talking about Jeremiah 51 in specific. Uh, Zechariah, he's another one. Um, he was actually wrote, written in the, the very, very near post-exilic period. Uh, it essentially happened almost, if not right at the end of the Babylonian captivity, shortly thereafter. Uh, let's see, uh, 5, 5 through 11 goes out of its way of talking about um, the woman in the basket, right? It, this is iniquity of the people throughout the land. Um, let's see. To the let's see, covered in the the woman is covered in lead. This is in a basket, covered in lead, uh, and it's and this this is to be sent off to the country of the Babylonians, the daughter of Babylonians, uh, to build a house for it. When the house is ready, the basket will be set in its place. Um, it's going out of its way to point out that a this is this is this is a financial iniquity this is a well let's see amoral immoral and or grossly unfair um, economic behavior right and i mean look what's going on around us look at the way that our system has been sold to us as economically beneficial to the people and yet utterly the power the power of of economic control has utterly been given over to multinational corporations governments abuse it you know they say that uh the the free market economy thanks buddy the free market economy is the best thing that's ever happened to us but it's only been used against us um to, to the point to where you know even though some of us can still succeed financially uh satan has essentially drained every last bit of the American dream away from the majority of, of, of its inhabitants, right? Like it is totally possible to get to a place where you can survive here and we are totally rich, but we are utterly, uh, we are abused at every end of the system. So obviously we're living in the land of iniquity right now. If you're in the United States and you're doing any amount of hard work and you've seen your money taken from you, let's be honest too, you know, the, the quote unquote free market economies of Europe, they were utterly, utterly taken over, uh, what, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago? Uh, and they've only progressively gotten worse. You know, they've, they've taxed the people to such a point that most people cannot even begin to afford the idea of having kids or, or, or getting married, let alone just take care of life, right? So the, the, the Babylonian way of, of basically dishonest trade was foretold in Zechariah there and well Babylon didn't exist at that point but we can also look at first Peter 5 13 talking about she who is in Babylon uh, that was the end of the the book he was making reference to those who are in Rome Rome also suffered from a lot of the same uh, economic and moral degradation that our current modern-day United States suffers and spoilers the United States absolutely is the only nation on earth at this point in history especially being right on the cusp of the tribulation 
that could actually turn into the end times mystery Babylon, the great prostitute, so on. So just putting it out there. If you guys see the videos, I actually have one of the videos, I think it's part three, that specifically goes out of its way to name names and point out all of these things and make all of the reasonable, logical conclusions come to light, again, in, in light of scripture specifically. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, guys, um, we cannot avoid the the obvious direction that scripture is pointing you know we're a strange people from a strange land with a strange tongue read isaiah by the way guys that is probably the most bulk of information about both original babylon and the current end times babylon because again as i've noted in previous videos you know scripture sometimes only applies once most of the time it applies at least twice sometimes three, four, and sometimes r repetitively until the end of time when the Lord destroys this place and we start over again. So I very much see just the same way that Antiochus and um, a few other different scriptures that the Lord was specifically talking about, you know, destroy this temple, raise it on the third day. All these different prophecies were specifically talking about an event that occurred back then and an event that will occur soon to come, at least in the short span of time that humans are here on earth. And Babylon is no exception. You know, a lot of the descriptions of the end times Babylon very much fit in line with both Rome and the original Babylon in that, you know, we're very full of ourselves. We're exceptionally arrogant. We love ourselves more than anyone else on earth. We are the hammer of God that is used to punish other evil nations. And yet eventually we end up earning our own destruction just the same way that the six bowl judgment ends up utterly destroying Babylon. It turns out, by the way, guys, that the biggest reason why she's, you know, the, the giving out the, the, the cup of maddening sorceries and whatnot, we are the source. I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say this because I live here and I have this stupid language coming out of my mouth. But we are the source of the beast's religion. We are the place where he originally pours out his evil nonsense on the world and, and literally makes them drunk with madness, uh, accepting all of his sorceries and all of his AI nonsense and all the other false anti-God garbage that's going to be sent about. And we are going to uphold that mantle until we decide to basically reject him but by that point this nation will be so defined by its unbelievers not its believers like it is now that uh we will have earned that utter point of destruction just the same way the original babylon did just the same way all the plagues and all the poisonings and all the wars and all the death and famine that happened to rome that is coming here only it's going to come as it says in one day so it's going to be you know a single hour Babylon gets utterly raised. So we are the penultimate, we are, we are the ultimate Babylon. We are the, we are the, we are the grandest representation of what all of those verses in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, etc. We're all talking about regarding Daniel and its wanton excess. So not only that, we're the, we're the mass, you know, beyond just being the hammer of God, we are also the largest military by far. Um, obviously the largest economic power already addressed that. We're the, uh, we're the spiritual epicenter, but above and beyond all of that, just the same way the original Babylon housed the original faith of Yahweh, you know, it had Daniel and all the other, you know, greatest believers at that time alive there, somewhat being protected under the guise of all of that um, arrogant patriotism. We have the same thing going on here, right? Because if Jeremiah 51 stands true, that means that it looks like imprisonment will be the order of the day during the tribulation, primarily for believers. That doesn't mean some of us won't be killed off for speaking out like I am hopefully now. And, and I say that because somebody's got to do it. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't have others planned. He absolutely does. But knowing what I know, I would be very much out of line to not speak up now, regardless of what it may cost me in the future. That being said, the Jews that are returned from the post-exile will also come from this Babylon. So the ones that we see return after the Lord's done with Armageddon will likely be coming from Babylon. Uh, the believers that meet him there and are basically brought up during the actual rapture at the end, right after he, he returns, uh, we will be coming from here. So there will come a time, by the way, if you're hearing me now and you end up in jail in Babylon, don't give up faith, don't give up hope, don't give up doing what it is the Lord has for you in that moment, which is to help other believers and to get through this mess and to make your way to Jerusalem and see him. And don't ignore 
when he opens up those gates. You guys have to understand that lot coming out of Sodom, that very much is the story. It's not that we're gonna, we're told we're gonna turn around and be turned to salt, but if we think that we're gonna get out of jail, be able to go back to our homes, gather up our guns, gather up food, gather up weapons, whatever nonsense we think, you're very wrong because the death of Babylon at that time will not be a matter of years like it was for all the previous Babylons. It will, it says literally be in one hour. That doesn't necessarily mean one exact hour. It just means the speed, the ferociousness, the absolute rapidity of the destruction of this Babylon towards the end of this coming seven year tribulation will be so severe and so swift that anybody that decides to turn around and go try and retrieve anything is likely to lose it and their lives along with it. So when the gates are flung open, hear the word, get out. That time is coming, unfortunately soon, but we're not there yet. And one last note, guys, just because Babylon exists in the end time and just because this place is shaping up to be the only potential option, that does not mean that we technically qualify quite at this point. We are still and again, I'm, I'm kind of sad to say this because of all the false nonsense that the church in the United States believes. We are still the source of the, the largest amount of overall believers in the world. That will swiftly change after the great apostasy is in full swing because one, one could stand to reason that where the largest amount of believers are, there you will also see the most amount of defections. So as that defection picks up and as it, as it, gets to full steam you will see just how evil and stupid this place really is and how quickly we earn God's wrath by abandoning him wholesale and it's going to look and feel like you're alone but you're not and this was all on purpose I'm going to remember I'm going to do it right now after I get this uploaded right as it's being uploaded I'm going to put those four videos in there and anything else I can think of about Babylon because it is a very very important part of the end time scheme and you guys must be aware of it uh, you you got to accept the realities of it. Antichrist comes from here too. So if we're not keeping our eyes open, we might be tricked into thinking that the guy that Antichrist calls Antichrist, the king of the south, might somehow be it. It's not. The Antichrist does not come from the kingdom of the south. He will not be Islamic. He will be American. He will be Jewish. And he will be exceedingly good at what he does on top of his arrogance. Anyway, leave comments down below, questions if you'd like. I'm open to any suggestions for videos too, by the way. Um, I wanna be able to stay on top of things. I'm trying to get the job situation figured out to where I can be more consistent with this again. There's a lot of information still to cover. I know I, uh, I went through when this channel first started and tried to cover as much of the tribulational scheme as I possibly could. If you're missing anything or if you wanna know where some information is, I do cover the mass majority of my teachers um, it's an exegesis, really, of Revelation, but it also includes much of the Old Testament because Revelation doesn't make sense without the Old Testament. So uh, if you're looking for any of that information, you know, scroll through the channel or leave me a, leave me a message, um, leave me a comment. I'll get to you guys. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, share it if you know somebody that can use this stuff. The good chance of you being rejected is pretty high considering the misinformation, disinformation of the day, but that is to be expected. And... Um, yeah. Anyway, love you guys. I hope you're having a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.